Hey everyone, this is Candid and this is going to be a long video and I want to make sure that everything that I say is clear. This video is going to be about how I and how you can also get an A in I want to say just about any course. For me, I just finished completing um, Fundamentals of Nursing and if you, you know, talk to a lot of people, they'll tell you how difficult nursing school is. And I want to let you guys know that it's doable. And that's what I want you to focus on. When I went to nursing school, the orientation, the lady saw my grades. She was like, okay, I see you're an A student, but don't get freaked out if you do not get A's while you're in nursing school. I was an A student also in my prerequisites and I got B's and C's and it's okay. That, that's what she told me. It's okay. As long as you stay above, you know, they have like a, some schools are 75, some schools is 80. As long as you stay above there, then you're okay. But let me let you know, the very first exam I got a 98. I got one question wrong and the second exam I got a 9. Why am I able to get such good grades? This is what I'm going to tell you that I do. Before you get into nursing school, before school starts, make sure that you do as much as possible to create an environment for yourself that you can focus on nursing school. I'm just saying that save up as much as possible so maybe you can go part time. You know, maybe you can scale back your hours, clean up as much debt as possible so that you don't have to work as many hours if possible. Just do whatever you can. You know, I also just, if you guys don't know, I went to, my first school was Fordham University when I was a teenager and my parents went through a divorce and that disrupted my, my safe space, you know, and I had to, I was getting decent grades, but I was literally inside my class with tears coming down my eye because I couldn't focus. I didn't know where I was going to be, what was going on with my family. And so that's the reason why I'm telling you this. I'm not just pulling things out of the air. I'm telling you this from me to you. The second thing that kind of tags along create an a environment that's conducive to learning is also during your study time, have a space that's set up for you to study properly. If you have a house that's noisy, you might want to take advantage of the library. You might want to literally, you know, every single day find out what the library schedule is and ride your bike there, walk there, drive there, do whatever you have to do. You have your space set up that's comfortable for you, that's warm and cozy, that's, that's set up for you to pay attention to what you have to do so that you can have active hours of studying that you're not like fussing with other people and you're not distracted. So those are the two big things that I want you to think about before we get into the hardcore tips, all right? My first tip is to read the lecture or the chapter before you actually go to class. Now, I don't expect you to read the entire chapter in full. You know, I, I think that the most important thing is that you skim the chapter and I'll talk about how to skim or if you don't if you can't do that, if your professor gives you lecture notes, you want to at least thoroughly go through the lecture notes because that's what they're focusing on. What I do for skimming is I read the entire introduction, I read the first two sentences of every paragraph, and the last sentence of every paragraph. I also read any words that are bold, any words that are italicized, any words that are highlighted, anything that's treated differently. Okay, I also read the graphics and the tables because if they're talking about it in the text and they took effort to pull out of the text and also make a table or a graph, there's importance there. And you're not reading for full understanding, you're reading to have an idea. You're reading in order to get past the word recognition phase. So when you're in class, you're basically trying to understand what's going on, you're trying to fill in the gaps, you're not like how do I spell that? How, what is that word? You're past that. You can pay attention to what the professor is saying. The second thing that you're going to do is record your lecture. Things that are going to be on the exam are things that they say. It's not in the book. You know, and it's fair game. Once they say it in class, it's fair game for the exam. So you want to make sure that you're listening to the exams at least more than once. You know, when you're driving to and from school, you can listen to it while you're jogging, while you're doing dishes, whatever it is. You definitely want to make sure that you record your lecture. Tip number three, obviously go to class and take notes. Don't just sit there and listen as if everything is going to, they say it and you're going to automatically understand it. This is an example of my notes for a nutrition lecture. So as I said, anything that's in blue here, that's what I wrote in class. Anything that I highlighted is just something I want to call my attention to. Anything in black, 
that's after I reread the chapter notes to myself that I made at home. So I know automatically what the teacher said. When I look at these notes, this is what something she said that I heard and this is something that I researched. So I can just automatically look at this and know what was said in class and what I looked up myself. Using my red pen is something that was important or I might highlight something, a uh, part of something, just to know, hey, know these vitamins here, know what they do. Yeah, and I told you guys about the green, all right? So I might define a certain word here that I didn't know. And so automatically I know, just by looking at my paper, I don't have to even know what's going on. By looking at the fact that it's green, I know it's a definition. Anything that's in red, like I said, that's me just telling myself, for instance, these are instructions. Know these ranges. These are lab values, or actually, these are not lab values. These are BMI percentages. So I'll tell myself, know this. Make sure you memorize this. You know, I have here must memorize, and these are lab values, lab data. So that's how I organize that. Whatever method that you choose to use, just make sure that you understand it and that it works for you. But you should have an organized way of taking notes so that you can automatically tell what was said in class, what you've researched, you know, highlight things that are important, things that you have to memorize. You, you want to go down, when, you, when you're studying, you want your notes to be organized where anything that you know that you have to memorize is easily available to you. You don't have to be like, where was that information again? You want to know like, hey, just to memorize this, you don't want to forget about it. So you want to somehow organize your notes. My fourth tip is after you've gone to class, you want to reread the chapter. Now, if you don't have time to read the entire chapter, I would just highly suggest you to read the sections that are covered in the lecture notes. You're probably, I'm not going to say always because I've heard of some schools where they say everything in the textbook is fair game, but usually if they emphasize it in class, you want to pay attention to those areas. Your book has a lot of fluff sometimes, meaning lots of historical information, lots of like just stuff that you don't have to know. You know, it helps for clarity, but you don't really have to know it. So you want to pay attention to your lectures. Have your lecture notes right next to the textbook. Because you might see there might be sections where you can skip it. And if you're pressed for time, you'll find that you can probably still do really, 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 really well by skipping those sections. It might be an entire page or two. You know, because a lot of classes, they don't tell you read these two pages, skip this one page, read these four pages, skip these five pages. They just tell you read that whole chapter. You know, but in class, they want you to focus on certain sections. So that kind of helps you a little bit. But if you do have time, you know, read the entire chapter. My fifth tip is going to be to answer the questions in the back of the book, even if they are not assigned to you. I emphasize this so much too. Even if you're just doing it in your mind mentally or you're just covering the letter and looking in the back of the book, you know, make sure that you, that's the way you test yourself. And it's really important, I just want to emphasize this as much as possible, to find out what your weaknesses are so that you can focus on your weakness. Do the questions in the back of the book because if you don't know the answer, you're not going to just tell yourself, oh, that's the answer. You're going to go back into the reading and read it again to make sure that you understand why it's wrong, why whatever you chose is wrong. My sixth tip is taking that even further by testing yourself using outside resources. Maybe a book that hasn't been assigned to you. For me, since I'm in nursing school, I decided to pick this book. I've heard a lot of good things about this book. It's the Saunders NCLEX book. Focus on your weakness. It's the most uncomfortable thing to do because you'll be getting most of the answers wrong, but it leaves you the most space to grow. All right. So now that you've done all of that and it's coming up time for an exam, this is what I do that really works out for me. And this is my eighth tip. One week before the exam, you're going to focus on one or two chapters one week out. So if your exam is on Monday, the previous Monday or even the previous Sunday, right, you're going to focus on one or two chapters only each day up until your exam. The day before your exam, right, you should be finished with all the chapters. That last day, you're going to drill yourself. You're going to fix any holes. You're going to quiz yourself over and over. And you're able to go through any one of your chapters and just focus on the little spaces, on memorizing things, on listening 
So that day before, you should be finished, okay? This is just a, a space of reviewing for you. You should be ready to take your exam basically that day. But what you do is you're going to just fine tune any areas that you feel like you're not 100% sure of or that you kind of, you memorize it, but there's a couple of areas where it's not perfect. That's what you're going to do, okay? Super, super, super important. My ninth tip is you set a schedule. I cannot say this enough. So that you can study during a regular time period you cannot cram. There's just too much information to cram. So you have to set a regular schedule in order to study every single day. Make sure that you know where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing. Give yourself space before and after each event that you have to, you know, stop and do something else. Rule of thumb says to study for three hours for every credit. So if you have a three credit course, make sure that weekly you are studying at least nine hours, okay? And suppose you have a four credit course. Four times three is 12. So you have to find 12 hours every single week in order to study at least. Nine hours a week isn't that much. Like you work eight hours a day, right? So nine hours a week isn't that much. If you can give a boss 40 hours a week, I don't see any reason why you can get why you can't give nine to twelve hours a week for yourself to study. Okay, I'm not gonna get to cussing, but I get passionate because we work for other people and we do forty hours, we do overtime, we're there early, we work through lunch, and we're happy to do so, and we're cheery to do so. But when it comes time to do it for ourselves, we have a bunch of excuses. And I approach this, and I encourage you to approach it like a job. So. Think like I have to put these hours in. The same way we would get up 8 o'clock. I get up 8, 9 o'clock in the morning and I come down and I study. I make breakfast at 8 o'clock, 8 to 9, and I, and I study. Because it's a job. So if I, because I feel like, you know, I used to get up at 6 o'clock in order to catch a train to go work for someone else. So why would I not get up and do at least as much, the equal amount for myself or more? Okay, I can't do less. That doesn't make any sense. You have to at least do what you would do for someone else, for yourself. So that's why I get passionate, you guys, because I get to cussin, but I'm not going to. I mentioned a little bit earlier about how I would sit at my desk, you know, and I would study and study and study, and like I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't drink anything, and that is that makes no sense whatsoever. You know, that's like saying, you know, I want this plant to grow, but I'm gonna leave it in a dark room. I'm not gonna give it sunshine, and I'm not gonna give it any water. How would you expect the plant to grow? It just doesn't make any sense. So it's important for you guys to have water, eat a nutritious meal, you know, I'm not going to get into, maybe one day we'll talk a little bit if you're, if you guys are interested in some of the things that I do eat. I'm not any, I don't have like a very um, specific menu and I'm not very strict with my meals, but I am cognizant of making sure that I get enough whole grain. I don't eat white um, rice or anything like that. I try to have complex carbs, fruits, vegetables, lean protein. I will eat a pork chop if I want to, but if I do eat a pork chop today, you better believe that I'm going to have something very, very clean tomorrow and for the next couple of days. I, I, I believe in the balance. You know, I believe enjoy your life and do whatever you want. But most importantly, the point of this matter is to make sure that you are fueling yourself, okay? I read, you know, your brain weighs 2% of your entire body's mass and it takes 20% of the oxygen that you breathe and 25% of the glucose. And just think of glucose as nutrients, okay? Let's not even get into different types of nutrients or whatever. Just think of glucose as nutrients for now. 25% of it goes to your brain, okay? So there's no way that you're going to be able to continuously for the look because this is a marathon okay this isn't a sprint so you want to make sure that your brain is functioning at its optimal capacity so that you can do what you have to do that's about it so guys i wish you the best of luck and always be professional no matter what's going on at your job we'll talk about that also maybe another time but we've spoken about that enough so maybe maybe not but no matter what's going on always be professional you don't have to let your job know every single thing that you're doing behind the scenes that's your time to do what you need to do so if you have to go to school at night and you don't want them to know about it, that's your business. Go to school at night. If you have to go on the weekends, go on the weekends. That's your business because when you're ready to make your move, no one can stop you. Go and take you being disciplined about this time. I hear a lot of people talking about how hard nursing school is and how this is so hard. And I'm not going to say it's a walk in the park, but there's lots of nurses. They all made it. Why can't you? 
That's how I feel about it. You know, what's so special about them that they were able to do it that you can't? You know, so think about it in that sense. Don't think about how hard it is. Just think like every other people did this, I can do it too. Yeah, before I get to preaching, that's about it. Love, love, love you guys. I want everyone to succeed and to like live whatever dream that you want to live, okay? Bye.